Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Ahabat of Allah, this question is asked often Should we cooperate with Ahl al-Bidah? Should we go to their masajid and the other ways of cooperating especially in the West and in the context of the West as it differs with Saudi Arabia, as it differs with Yemen, as it differs with wherever, they, these places they differ and the situations differ compared to living on a Muslim, under a Muslim authority or where Ahl Sunnah is strong versus where we live in the West and Islam is weak or the Muslims are weak. Ahabatifillah, this is a very nuanced question. But in short, as we've talked about countless times, the asl is, the origin is, is that of course you don't work with Ahl Bidah, that Ahl Sunnah, they distinguish themselves from Ahl Bidah throughout history, throughout Islamic history. And this is why, because we also are concerned about the Madhab of the Salaf, how they, how they, uh, interacted with the people of innovation and desires and they were very firm in dealing with the people of innovation and desires however as the scholars mentioned that these issues are nuanced that at times Ahlul Sunnah is strong and at times Ahlul Sunnah is weak at times there is Maslaha and at times there is no Maslaha or there, at times there is more uh, mafsada then there is maslaha meaning there is more harm than benefits and at other times there is more benefit than harm and there are all these things must be taken to, into consideration what I've noticed is sometimes people get these get this issue mixed up that they mix this issue of cooperation with the people of desires versus giving them da'wah. And I don't know of any of the scholars who advocate sitting with the people of desires for fun and entertainment or allowing them a platform. I don't know anyone who would advocate that. I have never heard that advocated. However, it should be looked at as a thing of looking at the masali and the mufasid, looking at the harms and the benefits. If there is a greater benefit for the Muslims and for the Dawah to sit, for example, to explain, for example, to non-Muslims about Islam. And suppose there are people from Ahl Bidah that also they have the literature, they have the wealth, and they've invited you to speak without any conditions. Meaning they are not restricting your dawa, They are not compromising and making you make amends and compromise. And you are allowed the platform without them being the ones to invite people, for example, to bid'ah. Then, bi'idnillah ta'ala, there is no harm in that. Because again, you're looking at the greater good. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَعَوَنَ عَلَى بِرِي وَتَقُوا وَلَا تَعَوَنَ عَلَى إِثْمِي وَعُدْوَانِ And here all of you, uh, uh, cooperate all of you in taqwa, in, in, in piety, and God-fearfulness. And do not cooperate in sinfulness and enmity and hatred. So we know that that is the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the divine speech of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. But however, we cannot cooperate on bid'ah. The mas'ala, a mas'ala far'in from this, a mas'ala that branches from this is going, for example, to give da'wah in the masajid of Ahl bid'ah. To known bid'ah mubtadi'ah masajid. As walillah alhamd, we see that many of the ulama, they mention again the importance of looking at this issue from a, from a, a perspective of ilm, of knowledge. Some of the ulama see it as very black and white. And I think you cannot blame them in this 
matter. And that's because they look at this as a way of making strength for Ahlul Bid'ah. They look at this as a way that Ahlul Bid'ah sees can then say, hey, we have Sheikh so-and-so or a student of knowledge so-and-so coming to give talks with us. So they have a wudge. They have a, 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 a an acceptable perspective. However, I believe the most correct view, and I, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was able to ask at least seven scholars that I respect in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia <coughs> about this issue. And all of them said that it basically mabni ala maslaha wa mafsada. That it is built upon the harms and the benefits. Looking at if there's a greater harm and they're not going to compromise your dawah. They have invited you to speak and call to the sunnah and call to tawheed and call to khair. Then this is khair. That you should take that opportunity if there is a greater benefit in doing so. And if the harm is less or little. And... Some of them mention further details that your brothers from Ahl Sunnah are aware of this. However, I just wanted to mention just that this issue is nuanced, that it's not a black and white issue. And again, it should be in a situation where Ahl Sunnah is strong, meaning that, that you have the, the power to say what you need to say. And that does not mean you are inviting them. So there's a difference, and that's why we have to know when we're talking about ta'awin, cooperating, cooperating could be both ways. So of course, that that's not acceptable. So we have to understand that because some of the people, they're eager to open the floor for all mubtadiyah. And they want to belittle a lot of the principles of Ahl Sunnah, so a lot of their mubtadiyah scholars and du'at that they respect can have an open platform and can be acceptable and they want to say, hey, you have to be a mujtahid to speak about the people of innovation. We don't know where these conditions came from. I don't know where these conditions came from. We don't want everyone. Everyone should not be in this, uh, about, about, involved in speaking about people. But however, nor should the beginning student of knowledge, but however, people who are grounded and know the difference between bid'ah and sunnah, of course they should speak the haq. And they do have a right to criticize. And it doesn't matter your degree level. It doesn't matter if he so-and-so has a PhD and you don't have a degree or what have you. It doesn't matter necessarily the manzil of the person. It matters the knowledge and that you have the ability to distinguish what is good versus what is evil. What is bid'ah versus sunnah. That means you have knowledge. And you have knowledge of the mukhalifat of the person making those mistakes, and you are protecting the community. Yes, these are valid arguments. But unfortunately, many of Ahl Bidah don't understand that, and they don't want to accept it. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to bless us with the class, with the vat. Wa amal ala sunnah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya na Muhammad. Wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa sallam. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته